So let me just give you, let me give you a couple more commandments because this, I'll show you this is what the Bible says how to get right. Yeah, I'm not perfect in God. No, I'm not perfect either. Sure. You know, well, I go through what I go through and I talk to God. I, I talk to God, you know. Have you ever used God's name as a cuss word to express anger? Like OMG or yeah. SH? Yeah, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing and I'll be, uh, not really big for that. You know, I say sorry. Yep. You know? Yep. Yeah. How about you, Rico? Yeah, I have. So that's blasphemy in the Bible, considered to be punished by my death in the Old Testament. Let me give you one more. What letter is in the middle of the word sin? Hold on, let me get this ball. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, All right, right? So it, it's because if I go, then that means Jesus died for no reason because I'm not perfect. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not ex can't expect you to be perfect. Yeah. What, really what I want to do is just tell you how to get right with Jesus. But first of all, I got to show you. Uh, the x-ray like if you was going to a doctor and let's just say you had a terminally ill disease that you were going to die Would you want the x-ray first or the cure? The cure? Yeah, but you don't know what I'm giving you though So you probably want the x-ray first to determine if you want the cure That makes oh, sense. Are you talking about from the doctor? Yeah, from oh. the doctor. Oh, I would want the x-ray from the Yeah, doctor. would you want the x-ray or the cure first? The x-ray? Yeah, because you want to see what's going on. Well, let me give I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is giving you guys an x-ray of your soul and based on what we said if you were to stand before God, and I'm just right there along with you guys, man, we're liars, we're thieves, we're adulterers. Man, have you ever had sex outside of marriage? Yeah. Yeah, that's adultery according to what Jesus said. And that, now sex is not bad, it's just when you take it outside of the confines of marriage, it's like fire in the fireplace. As long as you keep the fire in the fireplace, it's good. You, you take that fire and put it on the carpet, it burns the house down. Well, as long as you keep sex in marriage, it's good. You take it outside of marriage, man, it just destroys people's lives. So. What I'm trying to share with you guys is, man, we're all guilty, right? And so if you still before a judge guilty, what does a good judge do to people that are guilty? <laughs> You're not succumbing to it, right? I'm not gonna just slam nobody, so I'm not like that. I'm a I real you. person. I'm a, what's the real about the situation? What's the sure. scope of it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Jake. Yep. Uh, oh, I can't get us. Can't get it. Okay, okay. That's you think you think God you think God will mostly judge us off of like saying like the I don't think God if there if there is yep. what you saying, I don't think when we get up there and see him and he's gonna determine where we're going. I don't think he's gonna go off yep. and cursing or getting tattoos and saying, Oh my god and stuff sure. like that. He'll go off like how we put an impact on other laws. Okay. Not how you determine that God is gonna let judge where people get in is based on how we impact other people's lives. Yeah, that'd probably be more of the part than that, but that is a big part of it too, because I know that was on the yeah. tablets and stuff. Do you think you have more impact on the good of people or more on the bad of people? On the better. On the better? Okay. All right. On the better. On the on the on the, on the better on, people, yeah. Oh, so you have more you have more impact on the people that are bad? Yeah. So you're saying that you're going to, so God is going to let you in based on how much good you've done for people? Yeah, the bad people, you know, you give them a different perspective. You know, you stay positive on the hater, you know, they got to, they force to change their ways. You know, they go through some things, they get some, sure. get some you know what yep. I'm saying, go through some paths, get some clarity, and they live their life different for the next. You know, it's always different perspectives. Like, okay. it's good to be positive to a bad person, you know? That's true. Because some true. people do need their karma, you know? Some people do need their, you know? They need to get what they deserve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know? that, well, this is kind of what I'm telling you guys. That we've all sinned against God, and so if you believe in karma, we all deserve the punishment that comes along with what we did. You see what I'm saying? That's why the Bible says there's a literal hell where people have to get what they deserve. Because if I see, if it's true that your sin was what put Jesus on the cross, man, we all deserve punishment from this God that is holy and righteous. Like, he, I mean, what's your favorite drink in the world? Like alcohol. <laughs> you don't have the alcohol. Let's just say, uh, I mean, you could choose alcohol. Sprite. If I took one drop of sewage and put it in your Sprite, would you drink it? No. Yeah, because one drop does what to the rest? Contaminated. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, if God let one of our sin into his holy, righteous presence, it'll contaminate heaven. So he has to either clean your sin up or have to punish it and put it away from it. So what if we ask God to forgive us every night before we go to sleep until we go? That's probably still not good enough. Let me let me tell you why. It's almost like telling if the man that murders your mom. It's like him walking up to you and saying, hey man, forgive me, can you let me free? No. That's, that's a slap in your face. Yeah. He deserves punishment. So he can't, God, even based on what you say, God, please forgive me, he can't, he can't let you escape your punishment based on you just saying, I'm sorry. Somebody has to pay your fine. Yeah. All right? So let me just tell you, let me, let me sum it up by saying this. This is going to probably set you guys free like it did for me. So based on what the Bible says, man, I'm guilty. We deserve punishment because God is good. He's righteous. 
But this is why he sent his son. He sent Jesus 2,000 years ago. We broke the law. Jesus came and paid the fine. So let's just say a man walks into the courtroom and pays your speeding tickets. Now the judge can do what? Set me free. He can set you free based on what the man has done. Well, when Jesus went to the cross, he paid the fine for all of man's sin. In order for you to be forgiven, but you must tell God, I'm turning away from my own way of thinking, my own way of trying to save myself, and I'm putting my trust in what Jesus did on the cross. The last words Jesus said on the cross is, it is finished. That means he's already paid your debt, but he, he's waiting for you to surrender your whole life to him. And if you repent and, and acknowledge that I'm guilty, but I need a savior. I can't save myself, I'm not good enough. If you acknowledge that and, and, and repent and tell God you're sorry, and choose to give your life totally to him, the Bible says God will pay your debt. And on the day of judgment, he'll see you as if you were completely perfect because Jesus paid the fine. That's how you, that's how you made right with God. So how do you give your whole life to him? So how do you give your whole life to him? Man, just tell God I'm sorry for what I've done. And say, God, whatever you want me to do, I'm, I'm giving up my life to follow you. It's almost like you're driving your car, right? And you're not no longer driving your car of your life anymore. You get in the trunk, spitting out the key and saying, Jesus, take me everywhere you want to go. I'm all yours now. He's not here to make you over. He's here to take you over. And that's what happened to me. You know what I'm saying? And if you'll just tell God, I'm sorry, man. I really want to change. I don't want to try to save myself. I don't want to spend eternity in hell. I want a new life. Man, God will change the desires of your heart, man. That's what I was That's what I was doing, man. I was I was out there, man, until I heard this message. It's a free gift. All you got to do is just repent and believe, man, what he did on the cross. And God will pay your debt. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way you can be made right. Jay, you talked about getting right with God. The only way you can get right with God is you tell him, surrender your life to him. It's like, like you trusting in a parachute, Jay. Like, would you jump out of, of a plane without a parachute? No, man. Well, it's even worse. If you if you die today and you jump into eternity without the parachute of Jesus, dude, you're going to spend eternity in hell because that's what God is. This is what he said. But he made a way. You see what I'm saying? All you have to do is just surrender to Jesus, man. Hey, no problem, no problem. Oh, got them butterfingers. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. Thanks. All right, God bless you. So, all right, tell me what y'all think, man. Uh, That's how much you love this, man. Uh, you used to be a preacher. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I, I might want to uh, ask you something. Yeah. What you think? What you got? Yeah, what I think about the interview? Oh uh, yeah. What you say? You want to ask me something? I'm good with that. Uh. Did uh, you understand what I was saying, though? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Kind of set you free, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I wanted to. Uh, I just wanted to uh, get something off my chest. Okay. Uh, you want to cut the camera off? Yeah. Okay.